Sorry, Sean, could you come outside? Good evening. This is the Channel 7 with the latest news and information for you. The news. Sorry about that. We can't get through to the news studio, so we're going to have to give you something else to engage your brains in. Well, Dora with her um, whistle. whistle. Um, we've got a poem, we've got some singing, we've got some violins, um, violin playing from Karen. Um, Laura's singing quite, yep, she's singing some, um, a penny whistle, I think the song's called. And, um, then we've got a boxing match for you later on today. So, this program should be pretty packed. Alright, let's go over to Laura. Um, I'm afraid that's not possible, so. Um, I on with the news. Laura, our Reverend reporter is reporting on Laura's school. Um, we've got the um, boxing match, presentation boxing, and we've got some um, dancing, boxing, and um, 
Carl with the violin, special um, request there for a girl who's in hospital. I mean, sorry, who's just left hospital. Um, so we'll go over to Laura, who's sitting on the desk over there, and we'll play you with the recorder with um, some slight adjustments.
you've got to go and get changed. Now I've got the boxing. Little girls and boys around, I have a little story. And it is called Rumpelstiltskin. Once upon a time, there was a miller. And this miller kept on boasting that he had a beautiful daughter, daughter who could spin straw into gold. When the king heard this, he was really greedy, this king. He sent for the miller's daughter and said, And you must spin all this straw into gold. If you do not, I shall have your head chopped off. And, and he locked um, Ethel, for that was the miller's daughter's name, into a small room with lots of um, straw. She sat down and tried, but every time she tried, the straw just broke in half and faded away. <sighs> but she'll never get this done, she said. So, she just sat down to rest. And when she was resting, suddenly a flash appeared and she suddenly sat up with a start. And a little man stood there, very ugly and awful. Said, I can string straw into gold. Give me your ring as payment. So she gave them her. So she gave the man her ring. The next night, the, the next morning, the king said, oh, "It's all spun into gold, but it's not quite enough of it. We'll have to spin some more." And he put Ethel, put Ethel into a bigger room with lots more straw in it. The next night, she waited for the little man to come again, and he did. This time she had nothing to give him, so he said, If you will marry me, then I shall, then I shall forgive you. I shall let you off. Ethel said, I'd rather die than marry you. <sighs> but what else could she do but agree? So she did. Next morning, the king was utterly astonished. <sighs> but Ethel wasn't. She cried and cried, and the next time she saw the little man, the man said, All right, if you can guess my name before one month has passed, then I shall let you off. And Ethel went around thinking of all the names she possibly could. And then she'd suddenly, without warning, the king's butler came up. Ethel fell in love with her, her in love with him straight away. And he said, Oh, I wish you, I could marry you. And they both wanted to marry so much. But when um when the king's butler ra went around heard of Ethel's pro problem, he went around the world trying to figure out all the names he possibly could find. But none of them were right, until he went through a forest, and the little man was singing a song. Clever I'm not, but a wife I've got, sure as my name is Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin, that was the little man's name. He ran back to the palace, just as the wedding was about to take place. One at the house shouting, Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Ethel, Ethel cried with joy, and, his, and she said, and the king, who seemed rather angry, spending so much of his time and money on a wedding that it's never to be, said, Ow, said to his butler, you must marry her, I can't waste all this money on a wedding never to be. So, the butler and Ethel all lived happily ever after.